10 years ago, I ventured out of Europe for the first time on a backpacking trip. Prior to doing so, I went online in search of destinations that would be inspiring as well as interesting, and I came across Georgia. But back then, I never actually got round to visiting. Then in late 2016, while seeking out new photography destinations, Georgia returned onto my radar. I researched the country, I hunted photography spots, and eventually booked my first trip in March of this year. Longing to return ever since, in June, I booked my return flights for this month, October 2018. Our journey began in Kutaisi, and we were there to visit a number of historical sites, as well as the capital Tbilisi on our nine day tour. But one of the highlights would be my return visit to Skaltobo. Today, Tuskaltobo is a playground for urban explorers and travellers looking to get off the beaten path. But as part of the USSR, it was a popular spa resort, famous for its healing mineral waters and radon bath treatments. We reached the small town via a short drive from Katasi, but in its day, thousands flocked from across the Soviet Union and there were up to four trains daily from Moscow. The first bathhouses are believed to have opened in 1870, but in 1925, the first sanatoriums with inpatient facilities were built. Development continued and in 1931, Tuskaltobol was designated as a bowel neotherapy centre and spa resort by the Soviet government. Bowel neotherapy is the treatment of disease and medical conditions by bathing in mineral enriched waters. During World War II, the hotels were used as hospitals, but after the war, their popularity increased, and by the 80s, the town was one of the most sought after tourist destinations in the Soviet Union. In close competition with many other resorts dotting the Black Sea coastline, there were around 5,000 beds in as many as 22 hotels and sanatoriums, built in a ring around the Central Park, where the baths and thermal springs are still situated in an area known as the Balneology Zone. Back in the day, a spa break wasn't a pampering holiday afforded only to the wealthy. It was a prescribed and mostly compulsory annual respite. The right to rest was bedded in the Russian constitution. Under the communist regime, a visit to the doctors could result in being dispatched to somewhere like Lithuania or Georgia, where spa towns were renowned for their healing properties essentially of their mineral waters. At the height of its popularity, up to 1,500 people a day were taking treatment at Tuskal Tolbol. Georgia's independence in 1991 and the fall of the Soviet Union late in that same year signal the collapse of the spa town's industry. And then, just a short time later, during the 1992 to 1993 Georgia-Abkhazian conflict, some of the by then abandoned hotels and resorts were used to house IDPs, internally displaced persons, or simply war refugees. Over 200,000 people fled from the breakaway region of Abkhazia, and it is thought around 10,000 of them were given refuge in Tuskaltobol, where there were rather a lot of empty hotel rooms by this point. It is supposed to be a temporary arrangement, but 25 years later, these makeshift apartments have become permanent homes for new generations of families. The condition of the buildings is extremely poor, and although basic utilities are connected, kitchen facilities mostly consist of like a single portable gas burner. There are no funds for routine maintenance, and especially to roofs and walls. Today, the Georgian government is looking for investors to help restore the town to its former glory. And even since my visit in March, two more of the buildings have been handed to the developers and work has already started. One of the town's highlights and one of those buildings now in the hands of developers since my previous visit is Sanatorium Iveria. According to an online Georgian news site, the Iveria was sold a couple of years ago for a little over 100,000 US dollars. 
but sadly the terms don't state any original features must be retained, leading to the possibility the building will be demolished rather than restored. However, work here is now well underway. Back in March, I had one of those wow moments when I first laid eyes on the entrance of the former Hotel Media and its stunning architecture. However, I soon realized this former hotel was also part occupied by people and we promptly introduced ourselves to a family standing outside and asked if it was okay to take a look around and to shoot some images. You are most welcome was the father's response in great English and he pointed to the direction we should head. It had transpired the left hand side of the hotel media is occupied and the part on the right is completely abandoned and that is where he had sent us. A staircase either side leads to the next floor where we were suddenly faced with a stunning blue arch supported by marble columns and detailed brickwork. The former Hotel Metallurgy had fewer damage in the Bannon parts than many other hotels we had visited. The large theatre or ballroom was no longer in use and is padlocked, but we saw very little additional evidence of abandonment. The main draw here was the central part of the building, once the hotel foyer, where there were large internal balconies and huge chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. The exterior of the building was also noteworthy albeit a little tricky to photograph as it's not very straight. The Soviet elite used to gather in dining halls like these which feature ornate arches and beautiful colours. This is one of the ones we were lucky to visit in March, however little now remains a few months on as work progresses to convert this large structure into a multi-million pound hotel. One of the highlights, Sanatorium Imerti, features an amazing dome with columns and a trio of fantastic staircases and an additional theatre hall. It also stands out for an array of beautiful colours, but also the most decay. 50% of this building is also housing refugees. I actually visited twice this year just to make sure that I photographed it all, spoke to some residents and took my time to take in the atmosphere. I feel that this building has the most atmosphere overall, and the little gardens created in the rear by the now residents make you appreciate the effort and lengths these people have gone to, but also to appreciate the things that you have back at home. A short distance from these hotels is bathhouse number eight, a former communal bathhouse that was presumably more for the poor than the party elite. This is completely abandoned and given over to the elements and the huge central skylight, whether this was once covered isn't something we can answer. It gives it a UFO feel. Bathhouse number five is another abandoned bathhouse that we visited twice, located also inside the park. The interior was large and it would have been pretty impressive in its day. Several of the deep yellow tiled baths are still intact, but since March, sadly, graffiti has now overtaken this entire building. A real shame. On the subject of tourism and whether or not it's appropriate to visit buildings occupied by people that are essentially refugees of war, this is something we have considered in depth and I have done personally on both occasions. I was appalled to see graffiti in many of the buildings now since my March visit and this is only really down to one thing, increased media, photographic and national attention. I wouldn't put Tuscal Tolbo in the category of dark tourism, visiting places associated with death or suffering, but some of the considerations really should be the same for anybody wanting to visit. Originally our reason for visiting the town was to explore the sanatoriums and to learn the history of the town as well as the spa culture and to silently shoot the interiors that were out of the residents way. The history and the future of the sanatoriums has now become mixed up and very difficult due to the more recent dark events in Abkhazia. Maybe you think this is being oversensitive, but one thing is for sure, I'm not sure how I would feel if I was living in their situation. Although many were very courteous, it's still a strange year for them, with so many visitors appearing in such a short space of time. However, maybe it is a year that will change their lives as they continue somewhat unaware of the increasing outside media attention that this town has been getting highlighting and raising awareness of their plight. 
In a few short months, Tuskal Tolbol has now become a tourist attraction for travellers and urban explorers alike. We did our best to remain respectful and sought approval, thus not to go uninvited into their worlds with camera shutters clicking. I know that we spoke to locals, asked if it was okay, asked if they minded. Do graffiti artists do the same? Does every DSLR waving photographer? I doubt it. In next week's episode, I travel to Gurgetti Trinity Church, the gem of a monastery in northern Georgia, so please consider subscribing for more content like this. Until next time, take care. <laughs>